Uh, here, here's the thing. It, I, Imagine you know, Loco Doco actually asking you, Steve. Imagine this, mate. There's a top three in this league that's really top heavy. And so anyone placed, say, fourth and below is going to have to spend a lot of money to buy into that. He, he's a weird guy, isn't he? He's, a, he's, an, he's an unusual oh guy. I mean, Tio struggled for so long because they were yes, in that exact spot. Exactly. They were in that exact spot. And exactly. Struggled. So how exactly. do you do it? The like, yeah, yeah. Unless Noah, win, like no other teams aren't going to have the same kind of opportunity where Noah Winston gets booted out of the league, and then they like Steve took full opportunity of what was available to them. TSM sure. kicking double lift, um, Immortals being kicked out of the league, so he got to build a dynasty like off sure. a great opportunity. I don't think other teams will ever get anything close to that kind of great opportunity. I don't think the top three teams will ever be that stupid to make that kind of mistakes ever again. Mm, uh, well, I mean, I obviously can't okay. share like how much money each of the teams are spending, but mm -hmm. all the teams spend money. OK, and the disparity between the the top teams and the average teams is actually not as great as you think it is. Mm -hmm. Like every team has resources. And uh, if you just go look at some of the public news about how much these uh, esports organizations are closing and funding, they have access to capital. They yes. can decide to use it if they come up with a good plan. And some of those organizations don't have good plans. Mm -hmm. So they, they don't, they're either putting their capital to poor use or, you know, and to your point, like this convergence of an opportunity that was only born once, like I consider that bullshit. Like they need to think about how to build another championship team. There are a lot of permutations in order to do this. Like this, the way that we did it was not the only way. That's, I, I just think that that's bullshit. Like, come up with a different way. There's there's plenty of players out there. Like, um, well, my counter to that would be the most valuable resource in NA right now are the NA players. As you said, all the teams have money, so if they want, they can go out and get top tier imports, like um, Hundred Thieves did with Bang. <coughs> but the problem is they don't have the three good NA players like needed to build a good team. And those are the resources that TL, TSM, and C9 have that the other teams don't. And that makes it so hard for them to build championship rosters. It's not the money. Well, it's let the me counter that then. Okay. Here's the counter. First of all, there's two parts to it. One, when you just said there that they like put together the pieces and they already had basically a dynasty, mm. that's looking backwards loco. What? So Immortals who lost to TSM in the final and then got grouped at Worlds, that's a fucking dynasty of players. No, mm. most people would take like one of those players. Like maybe they'd take it Smithy or maybe they'd take Paul Belter or, you know, like they go that way. Like they're not going to take, oh God, you must get me that team, please. All right, I'll pay any amount. No, mm. like it's all well and good to say that now, local because they won all the championships. So you know, they were, were good. At the time, if you say you have to pay a lot of money to get these players and like, yeah, you can put double lift in there, obviously good player. Mm. So that's not certain that that team wins. There's plenty of teams coming in that LCS that thought they had a lineups just as good. And then the other part to that as well is you've just answered your own question. So he was in a position where he was in promotion relegation. So nobody wants to join a team that's in relegation if they're a top mm -hmm. player, by the way. Like, unless you could pay them like 10 times more, and obviously you're not going to do mm -hmm. that. So no one's going to join that team. So all you have to sell them on is maybe more money, and that's debatable, and, sec and a vision. Those are the two things you can sell that guy on to make him join mm -hmm. a technically losing org and then turn it into a winning org. So where was all the where was Clutch signing those three players? Where was Cloud9 signing those three? Oh, yeah, they, Teal they, definitely they made better good decisions. Imports. Teal definitely yeah. made a better decision than the other teams. And I just think like for probably the next year, maybe a year and a half, maybe up to two years, TSM, TL, and C9 are gonna hold their dominance. I think they made the right moves. They have the great NA players where the other orgs don't. And I don't think it's going to be that feasible for the other orcs outside of the top three to really challenge them for a decent while until the other orcs are able to grow NA players. The problem is though, local, mm -hmm. like, I mean, I, d I don't think I have to explain this to Steve, but the amount of money a player is worth and you pay him doesn't mean he plays in the server as well as that. So you, you might have a team that you spend a nickels and pennies on. Like, look at the FlyQuest team. What a fucking great team that is. Like, that's not a team that was the biggest budget, I'll guarantee you. But they did a great job with it. Look how they spread it around. The whole point of a team like FryQuest, I made this point so many times in the split, is realistically with their with their team and their where their org is at, they weren't going to win the LCS. So in the context that they weren't, 
it doesn't make sense to spend the most anyway. Yeah, so yeah. what they got I actually is a very you. good team. They managed to, all, you know, they made top four. But they can't challenge legit. the top three. That's what. That's my main point. It's uh, really no, hard. because my point is, what if one of them? Okay, I'll give you an example. Mm-hmm. Like we didn't know it, but what if they'd have locked into the next licorice? What if Viper had turned out to be insane and suddenly he's like the best top player? There? I mean, then great, they'd that's like, amazing. Oh, yeah, I'm... and then they'd be like one piece away from an even better squad. You see how you do it? It's like you can't really look two years in advance and go, these teams are going to be on top for so long. It, sports isn't like that, dude. Like, ask, go ask the New York Knicks what happens if you spend big every season. You don't mm. necessarily win. It's hard. Yeah. Fucking general manager is the hardest job in all of sports. I, I genuinely believe that because I always tell people this. The thing about being a general manager, like the FlyQuest example I gave there, Mm-hmm. is it's not go sign the best player you can with the most money you can put forwards. That will ruin your org. If FlyQuest had done that, they'd have been idiots. They'd have probably finished in the same spot, top four, but they'd have overspent for it. Mm-hmm. Now, if you were a championship team, that's when you do it. So basically, the job of general manager is not just get the best players. It's get the best players that make sense for where my team is financially with the current plan that we have. So mm-hmm. if our plan now is we don't have that much and our team isn't that good, we've got to rebuild. You don't want to overspend. That's why it's a tough job. What do you think on this topic? Yeah, I mean, I think it's it's about putting together the right synergies, thinking about the play style, the likely meta at playoffs and major events, and uh, how the team fits together, you know, both from a psychology perspective and in-game play and, and kind of champion mastery. Like you, that that's that's the way that I I always thought about it. I mean, with the Mortals purchase, there was uh, players on that team that had played together for quite some time, and that has and and some of the players that were not part of that that I put together uh, had played together on other teams in the past, right? Like they they had sure. been on CLG, so there was there was synergy. And so when you talk to those players and you're like, hey, how was it working with so and so and you get an idea of like how that puzzle fits together and what those synergies are going to look like. And that's what it was for, uh, for me, there has been one consistent thing that I I think I've noticed over time with all the versions of, of, uh, uh, of league of legends rosters. And that is like the maturity of a player, uh, people like, um, like Viper, for example, Mm -hmm. for example, like so mature, thoughtful, good teammate, good energy commitment to like winning and learning and mastering the game, like uh, a sacrifice. Uh, Same thing with caps. Like I've heard rumors. He like, doesn't even have a cell phone. He, (laughs) he, he, he he does it. Like he literally doesn't have a cell phone. He goes to all these events, does is play league of legends and like watch VODs. Like he's so committed on just playing the game. He's sacrificing all of this personal life stuff. Right. Um, When you find, uh, athletes that have that from a psychological perspective it almost means more than how they how good they are today it's like you can put the right environment around them and they can be really amazing so uh every now and again you run across players like that i think i think licorice is probably a player uh for cloud nine like that so yes you have to like be able to identify those alongside current good players um, if you put together a whole team of rookies, you know, then you've got to have a insanely good coaching and infrastructure. Sure. Otherwise you're, you're in trouble, right? Cause you, you won't be able to deliver in the time that you need to deliver. Cause you need more time to be able to develop players. So that, it's, that was accidentally Steve, a, I a delivered straight with three fire rookies. burn about breaking point. By the Wait, way. I that delivered that with three rookies. Oh my, how's that a burn? He we did, got, he did, it, we <laughs> got to game five against the LG. That was not a burn. That was, that was credit, Doran. That was credit. Local. I was handed three Local. rookies and two troubles Local. in Korean. We went to game Local. five versus CLG. Local. Don't even. Oh. Local. How many splits are there in a year? You know the answer. It's not one. Steve was <laughs> afraid about... Steve used to come to my room and talk to me about relegation. We weren't even close to relegation with three rookies and two Koreans. That was By the way... Home.